<clears throat> while everybody is getting settled, just uh, uh, um, just to remind you, we're going to have, um, after I very briefly set the stage, we're going to have uh, presentations from each of the um, participants here um, on the panel. Uh, they're going to speak for about 10 or 12 minutes. I'm going to try to keep us on time uh, because we've already slipped a little bit. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have a brief period of questions, uh, three to five minutes per talk. Uh, it would be ideal if you could, since we will have a panel discussion afterwards, if you could keep the immediate questions to, to short questions, questions of clarification uh, and so forth. Long uh, philosophical questions we should uh, uh, leave to Greg to moderate um, with the rest of the panel uh, so that we make sure that we uh, are all on the same page. And I think, uh, um, as I'll come back to, uh, these concepts of uh, uh, risks related to randomization uh, uh, turn out to be potentially slippery, there's disagreement, and we want to save that for both for the talks and, and for the panel. Uh, you have the bios of the speakers, uh, so I will not uh, go into them in uh, detail, uh, but, but our panel is uh, Harold Sox from the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute at the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth, uh, Susan Ellenberg from the University of Pennsylvania, Nancy King from Wake Forest School of Medicine, and Miriam Kupperman from the University of California, San Francisco. And uh, the panel will be moderated by uh, Greg Simon, who has already been, uh, been introduced to you. So what we want to accomplish uh, in this session are uh, a, uh, oh, that's session two, all right. All right. Um, what we really want to understand here is, uh, is intrinsic risks that might be created purely by, uh, by randomization. So the world is not as, as uh, simple as, we, as uh, some of the hypothetical examples or intersecting bell curves might suggest. Uh, but uh, in, in the simplest form, if you have treatments A and B both in the standard of care, and you don't know ahead of time whether your doctor would assign you to treatment A or B, one salient difference between being in research and relying on your doctor's advice is that you will be explicitly randomized. And so one important question related to the risk of standard of care research is whether the very act of randomization, as opposed to relying on your uh, physician's discretion, confers independent risks. And in order to understand that, we have to understand what randomization accomplishes. We will have to think about the concept of equipoise, uh, and we have to understand um, also whether there is some kind of cryptic randomization or randomness uh, in normal physician-patient interactions that might occur under the standard of care. Um, one uh, complexity, although not, uh, not beyond the uh, expertise of this panel, is in Jerry Menikoff's uh, uh, final slides. Uh, he showed uh, not that, that, that actually the compared standards of care, A and B, might or might not, according to the Duke slide, I, I, I don't know that there's really good empirical evidence about this, might have slid into the middle uh, uh, into, into a, a bell curve. Uh, what Jerry uh, did not get around to saying, however, is we don't know whether that is truly reasonable or whether that might be a zone that maximizes uh, bad outcomes and minimizes good outcomes. We just don't know. And that's, this, this, this goes to the concept of, uh, of uh, why we do research um, to begin with. And so uh, we are going to discuss explicit randomization, um, what we might call implicit randomness or randomization in clinical practice. Uh, we are going to uh, consider something very important, and I think this goes to some of the questions as I've done, uh, read some of the background again, 
uh, with respect to implementation of any kind of guidance, which is how do we communicate not with uh, lawyers or not with uh, uh, scholars of clinical research, but with ordinary people who, uh, as we know in clinical settings, uh, might be anxious, to get across these concepts in a way that really allows them to be enlightened, per the first slide, and to uh, make decisions with the necessary um, information. And then we're going to discuss the implications uh, for, obviously, for standard of care research. And so with that, let me uh, uh, invite our first speaker up, uh, uh, Harold Socks. <laughs> 